Hello, young explorers. Welcome to Reach the World's Explorer Program. For over 20 years, Reach the World has inspired youth to become curious, confident, and compassionate global citizens through virtual exchange. My name is Colin, and I'm so glad you're joining us for today's live stream event. In today's call, Reach the World Explorer Tim Jacob will introduce us to the Endurance 22 Expedition and preview the virtual exchange journey ahead. The Weddell Sea off the coast of Antarctica is every bit as treacherous as it was for Sir Ernest Shackleton and his crew in 1915, but major advances in ship technology, marine robotics, and worldwide connectivity now make it possible to journey deep into the Weddell Sea again. And this time, you get to join the expedition. What's happening with the expedition right now? And how is the expedition team preparing for departure? Let's ask Tim. Hey, Colin. It's great to be here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim. I am an explorer, like Colin said. I'm so, so excited to be a member of the Endurance 22 team that is going to be headed to the Weddell Sea off the coast of Antarctica this year. And I'm extra excited that I'm going to be able to share that experience and my whole process of, of getting ready for this expedition and meeting the team members and going to the Weddell, Weddell Sea itself with you all uh, through this virtual exchange. Thanks, Tim. So can you tell us what's happening with the expedition right now? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll even go back one step beyond that and tell you a little bit more about the expedition for anybody who's new to the Endurance 22 expedition itself. Um, Endurance 22 expedition is a large expedition that will be leaving from South Africa in February of 2022 and taking a South African icebreaker to the Weddell Sea off the coast of Antarctica. And if you're not sure where the Weddell Sea is, I suggest you get out a globe and turn it upside down and uh, take a look all the way around the Antarctic continent uh, until you find a big sort of moon-shaped bay. Um, and it's you'll see that it's very, very far away from, from other land. It's a very remote and, and icy cold place. Um, the, the crew and the, the expedition team of Endurance 22's goal is to find the sunken ship uh, left behind by Sir Ernest Shackleton in 1915. So over 100 years ago, uh, a, a brave group of explorers set off for Antarctica and got trapped in the pack ice of the Weddell Sea, uh, which over the course of many months crushed their ship, which was amazing in and of itself because the ship was one of the strongest ships ever built at the time. And uh, in the process of being crushed, the ship sank to the bottom of the Weddell Sea, which is almost 10,000 feet deep. So for over a hundred years, the ship has been sitting at the bottom of the Weddell Sea with really no way of finding it. It's been just recently that advances in marine technology, um, you know, the ability for, for strong steel hulled ships to get to, even get back to the place where the, the ship sank uh, is possible. And by using marine robotics and by using, um, you know, GPS and uh, satellite communications and, and some of the amazing tools that I'm going to get to use to share that experience with you, we can get down to that spot and we can possibly find that ship again, which is just a super exciting prospect. It's been, like I said, over a hundred years since anyone has seen that ship. And to find it again would be a really, really big event. It's one of easily one of the most famous shipwrecks that has yet to be found on the ocean floor. But for the expedition itself, I think it's really important to understand that with an expedition of this size, you don't just all of a sudden decide that you wanna go do this thing and go do it. There's a lot of preparation that takes place. This expedition has been in the planning for probably years at this point. Um, right now, Everybody is getting ready in their own way. There are lots of different teams that are that are coming together to be a part of form this expedition team. 
Um, there are logistics to figure out, which just means there everyone has to make sure they have the right supplies and, and the right tools to not only have a chance at finding endurance on the seafloor, but also make sure everybody on the expedition is safe and that we have the ability to share this whole experience with you in your classrooms. So generally speaking, there's a lot of behind the scenes preparation going on from all members of this expedition. Um, and that planning is gonna be taking place for many, many months more until we get to the winter of uh, next year, uh, February of 2022, at which point the actual ship will leave the harbor in Cape Town and head down to the Weddell Sea. Wow, it sounds like there's still a lot of work to be done to prepare for the expedition. Um, thank you for that great historical context and for the overview of the expedition. Can you give us an idea of what kinds of people will be participating in the expedition? Yeah, that's such a good question, Colin, because a team of this size and an epic expedition like this is going to consist of lots of different kinds of people from different countries. There's a lot of teamwork involved in pulling off a singular feat like this of, of finding this famous shipwreck. Um, myself, speaking for myself, I'm going to be part of the education and outreach team, which just means that I am going to go and document everything I see, everyone I talk to, and I'm going to be even connecting you with some of the people on the ship as the expedition is taking place. So my job, and I feel so lucky to get to do this, is to share the story of the expedition with you and make you feel like you are on the ship with us and get you answers to your questions and much more as the expedition is unfolding. Some of the other teams that are involved, first of all, you have to have a captain for a ship, right? There will be a, a captain and a crew for the SA Agullis II, which is the icebreaker uh, that the, the expedition will be using. Um, there will be a team of scientists who are coming on the ship because we're going someplace that not very many people get to go to. And just getting there and having a chance to take some scientific samples and uh, look around and measure the water and measure the atmosphere and do, you know, collect that kind of data from this really remote place on Earth is a very valuable opportunity. And the scientific team on board the ship is going to be working on that. Uh, we have a subsea team, which just means, as you can probably guess, the people who are most interested in what's going on underneath the water. And when you're talking about the Weddell Sea, you're not just talking about under the water, you're talking about under the water, which is underneath what you can see in my virtual background right now, which is actually a picture from the Weddell Sea. It's ice everywhere. There's ice and it's it's complicated and we're gonna talk a lot more about ice over the course of the next few months. But the subsea team is mostly focused on how to get through or underneath this ice and sending this team or this, um, these really advanced modern marine robots to scan the seafloor, to look for the shipwreck and assuming that we find the shipwreck uh, to map it using some really, really cool lasers and mapping techniques um, that are all very, very recent innovations in the world of robotics. So those are just a couple of the, the different groups that are gonna be uh, joining that expedition. And I'm sure there will be more to tell you about as we go, um, but as with all expedition preparations, their teams are still forming and it's still coming together. That's so cool. And it sounds like there's going to be some really amazing technology on board the expedition. And you mentioned that you yourself are going on the expedition as a member of the education and outreach team. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing to prepare for the expedition and what kind of equipment you personally are bringing along with you? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I am so, so excited to go on this expedition. I have always loved exploration. I have done small expeditions and lots of exploring around my home in Chicago, but I've never participated in an expedition of this size. So a lot of the preparations that I'm doing for this expedition are new to me 
and very, very exciting. And as part of the upcoming virtual exchange, I'm gonna be documenting some of those things. Every step I take to get ready for this expedition, I'm gonna bring you with me so that you can see what it's like and imagine yourself doing the same thing. But to answer your question, uh, Colin, one of the first things I'm doing is getting a very comprehensive medical check. I have like 10 pages of paperwork that I have to have filled out by my eye doctor and by my, um, not my dentist, but my, it feels like every doctor that I have needs to contribute to this and just make sure that I am not going to be a risk to the expedition by having some sort of medical problem that will become a big issue when we're in the wet LC and we don't have easy access to uh, a doctor or a hospital or, or any of the medical facilities I might need. Thankfully, I'm in pretty good health and I'm not worried about passing that, but um, I think it's really an important point to note that every member of this expedition is it has a lot to contribute to the expedition itself. And by making sure that we're not going to cause a problem on the expedition, not on purpose, but because of a, a health issue, we're trying to control for some of the risks of the expedition, that it helps everybody and it increases our chance of being successful. And the other kind of big, um, big event that I am working on right now is taking a one day class. I'm going to take it in the Chicago area, which is kind of like a, a training class for how to protect myself if an emergency did occur while we were at sea. Um, it is a personal survival techniques class. It's going to be a one day class. Um, I'm, again, I'm taking in the Chicago area that includes some classwork, just like I'll be in a classroom, just like many of you are as you're watching this video. And then half of the day, I'll be in a pool simulating how to handle emergency situations uh, should they occur, fingers crossed that they don't, uh, as part of this expedition. Thanks for that great insight, Tim. And it really shows the importance that's being placed on the expedition team's health and safety prior to departure, which of course is really, really significant um, on an expedition like this. Yeah, you know, I didn't answer your question about gear. And I think that that really um, adds something to this question of health and safety because I obviously, am, and as I've said, from Chicago, Yukon, or from the New York area, we're used to life in these areas. And I have never been to Antarctica. I've never been to the Weddell Sea. So I'm trying to talk to as many people as I can and learn as much as I can from people who have been there about how to stay safe, how to prepare, how to make sure that I have everything that I'm going to need uh, to go there. And one of the things that I have researched recently and is part of my packing list uh, for this expedition is some really, really good sunglasses or ski goggles. And I thought that might be the case. I know it's, it's very cold and, and windy and snowy um, in the Antarctic region. But the reason that you need those struck me as sort of surprising. Um, one of the things, again, as you can see from my virtual background, is that most, most of the surface of the Weddell Sea is a very bright white. It is snow, it is ice, it is highly reflective. And when we are going down to the Weddell Sea in February of 2022, it is sort of the tail end of summer in the Southern Hemisphere. So most of the day, the sun will be up. The sun really doesn't set very, for very long, if at all, during the day. So that sun is beating down on, on the snow, which is reflecting all of the sunlight sort of back up into your eyes if you're there trying to look around. And that's a lot of sun coming into your eyes. And in fact, if you don't take pretty serious precautions against that kind of brightness. You can get something called snow blindness, which affects your ability to see anything at all. And I want to avoid that, obviously. So I'm going to be looking for some sunglasses or goggles that are, have, I think they're, they're supposed to block almost 90% of the light uh, that you see um, to keep your eyes safe in that environment. Wow, that's interesting. Um, just one of so many ways that the Antarctic environment is so completely different than 
anything that we've experienced before. Um, having that, that almost 24 hours of sunlight every day um, mm -hmm. and then having to account for the reflection off the ice. Uh, that's really just something that most of us have never had to deal with in our daily lives in, in the US or whatever country you're joining from. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite topics. What kind of wildlife can we expect to see along the way as the Agulhas 2 journeys through the Weddell Sea? That is a great question. It's one of the things I'm most excited to witness too. As I've said, I've never been to Antarctica. I've never been to the Weddell Sea, but I have had the privilege of speaking to many people who have. And I know that there are whales, lots of whales in the Weddell Sea. I know that there are penguins. I know that there are seals and that those communities of animals are very active. Those are the largest animals um, in the Weddell Sea. And I think it's fairly common for those animals to pop their heads up in these spaces between ice and, and swim underneath the ship. And I, I expect to see all of those animals along the way. At the same time, there are so many things we don't know about the Weddell Sea. Um, the things that swim and are very obvious towards the surface of, of the sea are, are one thing, but we're going to be sending some really impressive marine robotics down to the bottom um, of the sea, 10,000 feet down this dark, completely frigid, like in some cases colder than 32 degrees Fahrenheit water. So when you get to the bottom and you have this robot that has a high definition camera and bright lights, you're really illuminating a seafloor that we know very, very little about. So it's highly possible that in the process of looking for the wreck of the endurance, uh, we'll be getting footage of creatures that are very new to science, uh, new to our um, understanding of the ecosystem on the, the sea floor of the Weddell Sea. And I'm almost as excited to, or I'm almost as excited to see the creatures I know nothing about and can't anticipate than I am to see the ones that I know are probably gonna be there. Yeah, that's really incredible. And it just shows the many purposes of this expedition. Of course, the primary objective is to locate the wreckage of the endurance, but there are so many other amazing things to see and discover and learn about along the way. Which brings me to my last question. What are you most excited about as you prepare to join the Endurance 22 expedition? Well, I have been really excited. As, as soon as I found out that, that I was gonna get to go and share this experience with all of you, I've been thinking through all the ways that I can make this experience really come to life for the students who are gonna be following. And I've been putting a lot of time and thought into that and I'm excited to make it a really memorable experience for everybody who's participating in the virtual exchange. My family has been so supportive. I have two young kids and they're really excited to see their dad go down to Antarctica and share that story. Um, so I think what I'm most excited about is taking this place that very, very few people get to see or ever visit because it's so hard to reach. And for one of, one of the first times ever, really sharing it globally, inviting thousands and thousands of people to, through my eyes and, and through my ears, experience this really, really special place on the earth. Um, I think it's just a once in a lifetime opportunity and I can't wait. Thanks, Tim. We're so excited that you're going to be on board, and we're so excited to hear more from you as you prepare for the expedition and, and of course, once you embark in February. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, I can't wait.